Chapter 23 of The Phantom of the Opera, entitled The Tortures Begin. This is the Persian's narrative continued. Eric and Christine argue over the bag, which has the key to the torture chamber in it, and eventually Eric manages to get the bag back. In light of the way Christine is acting, Eric realized that Raoul must be in the chamber. Christine continues to try and trick him into thinking no one's in there, but Eric's not falling for it. In this moment, there's something about the gravity of the situation that has Eric raving in ways that are downright frightening. He unleashes his skills as a ventriloquist in front of Christine, and she becomes visibly shaken. When Christine realizes that the torture chamber is heating up, she passes from consciousness as Eric begins to laugh out loud in his maniacal way. Chapter 24 of The Phantom of the Opera, entitled Barrels? Barrels? Any Barrels to Sell? This is the Persian's narrative continued. In the torture chamber, as Raoul starts to lose his mind, the Persian observes evidence of someone else who has been inside the chamber. He concludes that it must have been Joseph Bequet. He tries to calm Raoul as the temperature rises and starts looking for the panel that is actually a door. He uses his knowledge of Eric's construction skills to try and locate the spring which will open the door, but he's unsuccessful. Eric himself puts pressure on the situation by torturing his victims even further, producing animal sounds through the art of ventriloquism. He even has gimmicks that allow him to produce the sound of water, even as Raoul and the Persian are suffering from heat exhaustion. As time passes, Raoul and the Persian actually do consider the merits of suicide, when luckily, the Persian spots a groove in the floor where a vague nail acts as a trap release. Much to their relief, a trap door opens. It leads to a winding staircase and down into what must be Eric's cellar. It's here that they think they've discovered Eric's wine and possibly some drinking water because there's barrels that are stored all over the place but when they manage to pry one of them open, they are shocked to see that the barrel is full of gunpowder. The significance of 11 o'clock is important here because it's mentioned for the third or fourth time. It has to do with the time that Eric seems to hint as a doomsday type time in which everything is going to end. The seriousness of the gunpowder find proves that Eric is not joking around about destroying the theater. But what the significance of the 11 o'clock does is that it puts a time constraint on the narrative and that creates an immense amount of suspense to the story. The torture chamber is no ordinary torture chamber. When we think of torture chambers, we think of the Spanish Inquisition, unfortunately, and we think of all these devices where people are locked up and they're tortured by all these crazy tools. But this torture chamber is different in that it acts on a psychological premise, and that kind of reveals all the more seductive nature of Eric's personality. He has it set up to where the victim becomes so tortured in his mind by sounds and heat and the mirrors which reflect all these different sights and visuals that are hard on the mind. It draws the individual into killing themselves. It's a very malicious sort of idea that plays into the truly sadistic nature of Eric's character. 
We've learned that Christine had tried to commit suicide. And what this means is that Eric's character as a person is crumbling under the weight of his inability to connect with Christine. And now she's rejecting him and it's forcing Eric to act in a very, very crazy, very unstable way. And Eric is acting out on this rejection with much pain and much agony that is torturing him and he's taking it out on everyone. And what it reveals is something that the Persian had mentioned earlier and that he kind of views Eric as a child. And what Eric is doing is the classic sort of notion that some men or people with their significant other, and that's the classic notion of if I can't have her, well, then no one can.